I read the news so you don't have to, only I don't know how to read. Welcome back to RuneScape News with EVScape. The Desert Treasure 2 rewards beta has been released and we'll be going over all the new present items in great detail shortly. But first, in other RuneScape news, this week saw the conclusion of the new skill poll and sailing won by a measly 0.3% of the votes. Less than 100 votes separated sailing and shamanism, which means now we'll have 40% of the community spite voting anything Jagex offers in regards to the new skill. Another classic Jagex moment. Slayer Masters now sell the option to increase the amount of revenants received on a Slayer task to between 100 and 150. All those people that chose to restrict their accounts to not being able to trade other players and then continuously cry and whinge on Twitter that things are too hard to obtain can now rejoice. The Sleepy Tablet is now a guaranteed drop from Fasani's Nightmare at 100kc. Now that's a Fasani's dream. Okay, who the fuck wrote this script? Laren's keys are now tradable on the GE coming just two weeks after Reese spent 3.2 bill buying them from a Discord. Now that is just bad IRL RNG. RTO, Calvarion, and Spindle have been added to the high scores. And while we're on that topic, this week in Twitter news, Tedious uncovered that the top 23 players on the high scores for Calvarion are all just bots that have only killed Calvarion. There must be something crazy going on over at the anti-cheating division at Jagex to miss all of those. Bellis recently got some art commissioned and personally, I think it's a spitting image. And Alfie got fed up with the people in his Twitch chat asking about the drama. What are your thoughts on the Oda and Stella situation? Lastly, in IRL news, last weekend, I threw an anything but chairs party. Unfortunately, after getting to the pub, I had a bit of a tumble and ended up in emergency for my ankle. Four to six weeks off the gym and bed rest is what the doctor ordered. And of course, I went to the gym that night. That's all for the news. Let's go ahead and take a look at the new prayers and items coming to RuneScape with Desert Treasure 2. Okay, over here on the beta worlds with the new Desert Treasure 2 rewards. If you guys want to check these out for yourself, just head in game to either world 412, 409, 407, 405, or 401, and you get all of these items and you can check them out yourself. Now, the new rings coming to the game, the Ring of True Blood. This is basically an upgrade to the Berserker Ring. Instead of plus eight strength bonus with the imbued version, we now get plus 12. So four extra strength bonus there. And um, we'll go over some max hits with that ring. So with the old set with Max Melee and the uh, Osmumpton's Fang, we can see here, we'd be able to hit a 50, a 49 with max gear. However, with the new ring of true blood, that will go up to a 50 with the Osmontons Fang. And with the Grazi Rapier, it's a 55, whereas previously it was a 54. So only one extra max hit there from each of those weapons. However, with the Scythe of Atua, previously we'd be able to hit a 48, which was a 48, 24, and a 12 all up with the new ring of true blood that'll go to a 49, which is only one extra max hit because that will still be a 49, 24 and 12. Next up is the ring of true ice. This is going to be the mage upgrade ring. And we can see here, it gives a plus 2% magic damage bonus. This is the first time we've ever had a ring slot with a magic damage bonus and a plus 15 magic attack bonus compared to a plus 12 magic uh, attack bonus with the Sears ring. However, gives no plus magic defense, whereas the Sears ring gives a plus 12. So a purely aggressive ring here, but the extra 2% does make a big difference. Now the difference here comes most notably with the Tumakin Shadow. Previously with the Saturated Heart in max gear, you'd be able to hit, I believe a 64 with the Tumican Shadow, with the new Ring of True Ice, that's gonna take it up to a 66. So two extra max hits on the Shadow. However, that is amplified inside of the Tombs of a Masket, where the damage bonus is tripled, quadrupled actually with the Shadow. So instead of being able to hit an 80 in the Tombs, you'll now be able to hit an 84. So four extra max hits there. However, not everyone has just one bill lying around to get themselves a Tumican Shadow. So with the Sanguinesti staff, the old max hit was a 46. With the new ring of True Ice, that is still a 46. So doesn't make any difference with the Sang staff. You do get that extra magic attack bonus, uh, but no max hits. With the Trident of the Swamp, 
new max hit is 45 and old max hit is 44. So you do get a max hit with the Trident of the Swamp. And lastly is the new range ring, the Ring of True Smoke. Previously, you have the Archer's Ring imbued, which gives a plus eight range bonus, no strength bonus. The Ring of True Smoke is going to give you a plus 10 range bonus and a plus two ranged strength. So that is gonna give you some max hits in some places. Now, most notably prior to this update, the max hit with a twisted bow in max gear was a 79. And with the new ring, that is gonna go up to an 81. So two max hits there with the twisted bow and with the blowpipe in Missouri, you should be able to hit a 29 and now you'll be able to hit a 30. That is with rune darts, however, not with dragon. With the dragon darts previously, you'd be able to hit yourself a 31. And with the new ring, you're now gonna be able to hit a 32. So decent increases in terms of max hits around the game with these new rings. The last ring is the Ring of True Shadow, which only gives, uh, it's basically like a Berserker ring, uh, regular Berserker ring and a regular Warrior's ring mixed into one. It's gonna be pretty useless around the game. There'll be a few niche moments where you can use it, maybe corpse specking and stuff like that, but nothing too crazy. Taking a look at the new Virtus armor, this is gonna give a plus 4% bonus each piece uh, for ancient magics only. So not better than ancestral for stuff like a trident, however, much better for things like ancients. Now, previously the max hit in max gear with an ice barrage was a 42. However, you chuck on the Virtus robes and that is gonna go all the way up to a 44. So two extra max hits on your barrages. Uh, that is going to make a huge difference if you're out PKing. Now, the new upgraded Ancient Scepters, these are going to be pretty useless within the game. Once again, maybe some niche uses, but nothing too crazy. The Blood Ancient Scepter, that is going to increase the healing of blood spells from 25% to 33.75%. I know, absolutely crazy. The Ice Ancient Scepter is going to have extra time holding your opponent with freezes. A Barrage is going to hold your opponent for 43 ticks instead of 32 ticks. So we may see this used in PKing. Uh, maybe not so much with the removal of the singles area and uh, now singles plus you can't hop around and people don't get focused by teams, but potentially we will see this in PK. The smoke ancient scepter, this is useful for poisoning your opponents with the smoke barrage and the poison severity is increased from 20 to 27. This means if you poison your opponent, it is going to deal six damage instead of five. Once again, extremely useful. And the shadow ancient scepter, the shadow barrage spell uh, decreases your opponent's attack level by 15%. Now with the new Shadow Ancient Scepter, that is going to go to 20%. Uh, once again, absolutely useless. Now the last item to take a look at is the Soul Reaper Axe. This is going to be a new item coming into the game, which has had its special attack bar replaced by a new bar. Now this weapon is a little confusing. I'll try my best to explain it, but basically every hit you do with the ax, you're gonna take eight damage and that is gonna increase your special attack bar by one. So you take eight damage and then that adds to the max hit of the ax. So we see on the second hit, we can hit a 62. On the third hit, we can hit a 64. On the fourth hit, we can hit a 67. And on the fifth hit, we can hit a 70. Now we can use the special attack and that's gonna give us all of the health back and we're gonna be able to hit that max hit of 72. Personally, I cannot see an area where this is going to be useful. Once you charge it up, it stops you from um, taking damage. So once you get to full, you don't take the eight damage anymore. And as soon as you wanna use the special attack, you can use it again to get all of that health back. However, uh, if you don't attack for a little while, your special attack goes down and you don't get that health back. So I don't see an area where this is gonna be useful. It doesn't out DPS any other weapons anywhere, uh, but I'm not the smartest cookie in the tool shed. Maybe someone else is gonna figure out a pretty niche use for this item, but at the moment, I don't see why it's being brought in the game. All right, that is all of the new items that are going to be coming, but now it's time to get into the meat and potatoes of the new update, the new prayer book. The first prayer we are looking at is rejuvenation. This is basically like rapid heal from the previous 
prayer book. I'm gonna do the same thing, but instead of being 50% faster, it's 66% faster. Ancient Strength is going to increase your strength and attack by 20%. Arcane Sight is going to increase your range by 20%, and Ancient Will increases your magic by 20%. Now, just to put those in perspective, that's gonna be a nice middle ground between Eagle Eye and Rigor, and the same as Ultimate Strength and Piety, as well as Mystic Might and Augury. So, right in the middle of all of those prayers. The next one is Ruinous Grace. Your prayer points are drained instead of your run energy. And this one is a very funny one. Your prayer drains so fast. Like you are so much better off just drinking a stamina potion. But I suppose if you get into a pinch and you're running by an altar, you can uh, chuck this on and uh, keep running. May be useful for early game Iron Man. If only early game Iron Man could access this prayer. Next up are the protection prayers. We have deflect magic, deflect range, and deflect melee. They work exactly the same as protect from melee, as well as range and mage from the original spellbook prayer book. However, uh, instead of reducing damage by 100%, it reduces it by 90%. And then you have a 50% chance to deal 10% of the pre-mitigated damage back to the opponent. So let's say your opponent uh, was going to hit a 50 on you. Your prayer is going to reduce that down to a five. So you'll take five damage. However, you will deal five damage back to your opponent 50% of the time. So 2.5 damage on average. So every time you take five damage, you'll deal 2.5 damage back to your opponent. So a little bit of uh, taking extra damage to deal a bit of extra damage against monsters. The level 71 prayer is Trinitas. This is gonna increase your ranged and melee attack and strength by 15% and your magic attack by 15%. So this is essentially like having ultimate strength Eagle Eye and Mystic Mai on at the exact same time. Level 73 prayer, Berserker. Boosted combat stats decay 50% slower. Everyone just uses the Divine Potions now anyway, so these are absolutely useless. Purge is the new Smite. One third of damage dealt is also removed from yours and your opponent's prayer. So one third of damage dealt is going to be smiting your opponent, but it also smites you. To put that in perspective, the original smite does one quarter of damage dealt is uh, removed from opponent's prayer. So I can only imagine with all of the fail safes they have in play currently to stop people from getting over smited, uh, they're all going to be absolutely broken on release. So if you go on PKing, Try not to run into rot. You will get smart of your plus ones. I guarantee it. Now, the next one is probably one of the cooler prayers. However, I don't see it getting much practical use. It is metabolized. Attack delay caused by eating is one cycle shorter. So for instance, after I attack and then eat, I have to wait a certain amount of time before I can attack again, a very long time. Normally I can attack every four ticks. However, with metabolize on, we hit, we eat, and then we hit again one tick quicker. So we get to go back to combat one tick faster than we normally would. I think you're going to see the most difference with the Karamba ones because there is such a small delay between when you can attack with the Karamba. Look at that. That was six ticks. So I attacked. I have to wait four ticks anyway. And rather than having to wait seven ticks before my next attack with the Karamba one and metabolize, I could just go straight into it. You will see this used on alts and stuff like that potentially. However, the prayer drain rate is quite high. Now we're through all of the shitty prayers. Time to get on to the big boys. Level 76 prayer decimate. This increases your attack by 20% and your strength by 30%. Once again, to put that in perspective compared to the old prayer book, Piety gives you a plus 23% strength bonus. So you're getting 30% from 27 with the new prayer. Now, just to show you some examples of max hits with melee that are going to change with this new prayer. Uh, previously, you would be able to hit with a Grazi Rapier, a 54 max hit in absolute max gear with Piety. However, with the new ring and the new prayer coming in together, that 54 goes up to a 57. Three entire max hits coming out of this new update with the Oz Mumton's Fang. Previous max hit was a 49. With the new ring and prayer, you can hit a 52. So once again, three extra max hits. Now the 
biggest change comes from the scythe of Vatua. Previously, the max hit was a 48 with Piety and the old ring. Now, you can hit a 52. That's four extra max hits from the regular hit. However, the kicker comes from the fact that that is now, rather than being a 48, 24, 12 max hit, the max hit is now a 52, 26, 13. So those four max hits take us up that extra level to the perfect spot where instead of getting four max hits, that's actually seven max hits with the scythe. The new range prayer is going to be annihilate. That's gonna increase your range strength by 30%. Once again, up from 23% with rigor. So this is gonna make some big changes to max hits with range. Previously with the old ring and dragon darts in the blowpipe, you could hit a 31 with the new ring and the new prayer. You can now hit a 34. Three max hits with the blowpipe, a two tick weapon is absolutely fucking insane. Previously with the T-Bow and the old ring, you could hit an 83. That being said, with the new prayer book, Annihilate and the new ring in void. The new max hit is 90. That is outside the chambers of Zeric as well. A 90 max hit, seven extra max hits on the T-Bow, which is just, just, I mean, it's actually fucking crazy. Nothing else in the game has brought this much power creep uh, in such a short amount of time as this new prayer book. And don't get me wrong, I love it. It's just a lot. And finally, Vaporize, the new magic damage bonus prayer you actually get magic damage bonus from a prayer whereas previously with just augury you didn't actually get any magic damage bonus just the magic attack so previously with the trident you'd be able to hit a 44 with the sanguinesti staff you'd be able to hit a 46 and with the tumican shadow you'd be able to hit a 64. 44, 46 and 64 however with the new ring and the new prayer book you can now hit a 46, so two max hits, a 48, so two max hits, and the 64 goes up to a 68, so four max hits. That being said, once again, inside the Tombs of a Masket, that is going to be amplified with the shadow. We can see here, we have 75 magic damage bonus with the Tumican Shadow on. Uh, that is because it's amplified with the Tumican Shadow. However, inside of the TOA, that goes up to 100%. And with Vaporize, that'll take the max hit of the Tumican Shadow up to an 85. So a huge, huge max hit. And then on top of that, with the new ring, that extra magic bonus is amplified once again. And you have a plus 492 magic bonus. Inside TOA, that's going to be over 600. It's extremely, extremely accurate to use the Tumican Shadow after this update. Moving on to some different prayers. We have Rebuke. That's going to increase the damage taken from NPCs by 15%, but reflect 15% of the damage taken by NPCs. So if you were supposed to get hit for a 10, you will now in fact get hit for an 11. However, you will reflect one damage back to your opponent. So that extra damage that you take from the hit, you will then reflect back to the NPC. Pair that with Deflect Range or May or melee and that is 10% plus the extra 15%, 25% of damage that you take is gonna be reflected back to your opponent. So that is definitely gonna add up. The next prayer is Fumus's Vow. Now, these are four different ones. You see you have the ice one, the blood one, the shadow one, and the smoke one. Um, and these are a little strange. Fumus's Vow attacks consume 20% of your poison to deal the same amount in bonus poison damage. So the best way I can show you this is by teleporting myself to the Krill Sutsarov boss. We chuck that prayer on and try not to die as we walk in. We'll try and get poisoned by the boss. We are now poisoned for 16 damage. If I now attack the boss and we hit, we should do 20, 16 damage as you saw there. So the 16 damage from my poison is then... Uh, taken back and given to the boss. So if you're poisoned for 20 damage, you can then use 20 damage on your opponent and that will slowly drain your poison as well. I got re-poisoned there, but that would take my poison down to 12 and then every hit thereafter 
lower that. So uh, we might see some metas change. You might actually be better off going into uh, a raid with Venom and staying Venomed the whole time and just slowly using Fumus's Vow. People that are much smarter than me are going to be able to come up with some better strategies than that, but we might see a huge meta change with Fumus's Vow. Umbra's Vow attacks reduce your target's defense level by 5% of the damage dealt up to minus 15%. So this is absolutely huge. We're going to see players going into the Ulm room or any boss realistically with Umbra's Vow on and just reducing the defense to start with and then throwing their hammers and BGS specs in. Uh, this is going to be a huge meta shift. People won't be entering with their defense reduction specs or potentially even at all. They may choose not to go in with those defense reduction specs and just using Umbra's Vow and then using some DPS specs like Dragon Claws. Claws Vow, attacks have a 10% chance to heal you for 10% of the damage dealt. I believe this is just a shittier Blood Fury. It does stack with the Blood Fury, but I don't think we'll be seeing many people use this one. That's essentially a 1% heal every hit. So every time you do 100 damage, you will heal one hit point. So uh, probably slower than just having rejuvenation on. The last of the vows is Glacy's Vow. Attacks have a 20% chance to deal 10% of the damage dealt as an additional magic based hit. So 20% of 10%, that's going to be 2% of every hit will be dealt back. So every time you do 100 damage, you do an additional two damage with Glacy's Vow. So not overwhelming whatsoever. We have Wrath. This is exactly the same as Retribution from the old prayer book. However, it deals in a larger radius. Vindication. This is Redemption from the old prayer book. However, when you proc your uh, Vindication, that is going to give you a 10% boost on your next attack. I don't think we will see this being used uh, much in PVM, people proccing their redemptions just to get an extra uh, couple of max hits on their next attack. However, we may see this in PKing. And finally, the last prayer is Gambit, increases your accuracy by 8%, which is not a huge, huge difference. Accuracy, obviously it's massive for going for those defense reducing specs. However, the kicker to Gambit is it is an overhead. So you can't protect from mage, range, or melee while you're using Gambit. So if you wanna get that extra accuracy boost, you're gonna to have to be flicking against the monsters that you are fighting. So this could see a huge, huge opening to the skill gap for high tier PVM. With it, I think we'll see the best PVMers uh, really, really separate themselves from the good PVMers after this update comes out and we have Gambit for that extra 8% accuracy because that will make a huge difference. That being said, that is all of the new items and new prayers that are coming to old school RuneScape. I believe they are in their finalized forms. Maybe they will make some changes to them. I'm not 100% sure. Let me know what you guys think about them in the comments down below and I'll catch you guys in the next video very, very shortly. Take it easy.